Hello audience. Now this is a 1930 Ford Model A. Now the ignition has a few problems that we're going to sort out. The biggest one is the distributor casting is broken, which as you can see it's kind of loose even though the set screw is tight. And the wiring is not the greatest, so we can improve on that. So we'll start with taking it apart. Now here you can tell, okay yeah you can see it, this is where it's cracked apart. Now the set screw holds it around here so there is not really anything holding it in. So pretty much this entire housing just needs to be replaced. Now I did find another original. I got this one for I think 10 bucks, 15 bucks and the housing is still in good shape and I think the bushings are still good also. Now my plan is I'm gonna take this one completely apart and just take the housing, clean it up and paint it and then transfer everything from this over to that because everything in this is brand new and it's been working really good. So I'll start taking this thing apart and see what we got. And here it is. Now the oil passage was clogged solid, so I had to remove the fitting and ran a drill through it. And I've been spraying oil on this thing and I got it freed up. The shaft turns really good. Also, it appears the bushings are still good. They're not loose at all. So that's good. Don't have to replace them because that's a hassle. So now I'm going to clean this thing up and paint it and start putting the new parts in it. It's a few days later. I since scraped this thing down pretty good and brushed on a coat of black Rust-Oleum. Not the greatest paint job ever, but it's good enough for my purposes. And I've got the parts out of the other distributor. I'm ready to put that together. 
And looks like I was wrong. Not all the parts in this thing were new. But they were working, so we'll put them in anyway. First thing we're going to do is put a few drops of oil in it and then try to install the oiler. This uh, new one that I bought. I install it. I'll try to make sure the hole is facing the top. Perfect. Now the lower and upper plates. And now the condenser. Now I scrape the paint off over here so it grounds. Now this one can be kind of tricky to install, especially in the car. Okay, I think I got it caught now. Alright, perfect. And now I'll install the cam and set the point gap. Now this cam is the one I took off of this distributor. I figured that'd be better than mismatching it, if it even matters. Now, I just threw it on randomly. I'll worry about timing it later. So I think the gap is supposed to be 18 to 22 thousandths. If it's not, I'll post it here somewhere. So, anyway, I have two feeler gauges. One's at 18 thousandths, the other's 22 thousandths. And it should be somewhere between those two. Since this was already a running car, it's probably pretty close already. So, try one. Right at the center of the lobe. Okay, it's kind of tight with 18. So we'll loosen that up a little. Alright, I got it set so the 22 gauge is just snug on it. So I need to lubricate the distributor cam. So. A little bit of Vaseline, which is what the owner's manual recommends. And I need to put the clamps back on. Now the reason I didn't just buy new clamps is because, first of all, these are still good. And second, I have had new ones fail before. Sometimes they can just crack and fall apart. 
know that these will work. And another thing I forgot to mention is this replacement distributor. It uses a removable shaft, which was missing, so I had to dig one out of the parts box. Now some of these were not removable, some were, but they all work. It fits the gear with a keyway, same keyway on either side, and it's offset, so it'll only go on one way. I think that one just dropped right into place. Very unusual. Anyway, the alignment dowel on the distributor goes towards this side. It's easy to tell because the lever to adjust the timing faces the back of the engine. Alright, turn the cam until it's aligned. And it won't go in. Aha! There we go. I just needed to align it. So now we need to find number one top dead center. I'm sure most of you are familiar with the trick of using the timing pin. Remove it, install it backwards, and turn the engine until you feel the indentation in the timing gear. And that's number one TDC. That can be difficult to find. And one trick I do, just to make sure it's there, is I take a mirror and a flashlight and try to visually see it. I think, yeah, I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but I think you can see it. Anyway, that's how I do it when I'm not entirely sure. So now that it's set perfectly there, we'll start timing it. And now we'll set the initial timing. Now, there's several different methods and different techniques people use to do this, and I'm getting some pretty serious arguments over which is better or what. Now, the technique I'm going to use is exactly the way described in the owner's manual. Because, let's face it, if Ford doesn't know how to work on their own cars, who really does? First thing, loosen the cam screw. Just enough so it turns freely. I'll put the distributor body on and make sure it's set to the full retarded position. Put the rotor on and turn the cam so it's pointed towards number one. This one is number one. Now turn the rotor counterclockwise until the points are fully open. And then turn it clockwise until the points just close and no more. And then lock it in place. And I got that all set up. Now, as you can see, if you advance it just a little bit, it'll open the points, which is right on target. <laughs> 